we're taking a live look right now over the Israel Gaza border. One of the many cameras that we do have all over the Middle East right now. Developments are constantly coming in as the Israel Hamas war is now in week seven. Over the last 24 hours, we've learned about premature babies evacuated from Gaza's largest hospital. And the IDF released new video saying the surveillance shows hostages at Shifa Hospital. Fox's Trey Yinks joining us live now from southern Israel. He has been working nonstop to cover the latest developments. Trey, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here. Yeah, hey, Josh, of course. All right, so what is the latest coming in here? Because as I mentioned all the time, there are developments that are pretty seemingly coming out every hour or so. Yeah, just a few moments ago, there was renewed rocket fire from the Gaza Strip targeting central Israel. Hundreds of thousands of people heading quickly to bomb shelters as a rocket salvo from the central or southern part of the Gaza Strip was fired at these major population centers. It's remarkable 45 days into this conflict, Hamas and Islamic Jihad still have the ability to fire on major population centers. And it's an indication that despite the thousands of Israeli airstrikes that are still ongoing at this hour, the Israelis have been able to target different Hamas positions, but they've not been able to get all of the rocket launching units that exist inside Gaza. And we know that some of those uh, premature babies had been moved out of the hospital there in Gaza and taken over to Egypt. What can you tell me about that? Yeah, absolutely. It's a positive development amid this horrific story. Over the weekend, 31 premature babies that were being treated at Gaza's Al-Shifa hospital were moved to the southern part of the Strip. And today we learned that 28 of them crossed into Egypt as part of an evacuation that was coordinated between the United Nations and the Palestinian Red Crescent. They'll be getting further treatment, but an indication that these evacuations can take place for injured Palestinians, especially those most vulnerable, those young Gazans who needed immediate medical attention. This comes as the Israelis continue to operate around the Shifa hospital complex. A few days ago, we were with Israeli forces following their raid of the hospital, where still hundreds of people are being treated. And they say they've uncovered a tunnel network beneath the hospital, and they are continuing to dig to find out more about just how large that network is. When we were with the Israelis, they showed us a variety of weapons they say they found in the hospital. We have no way of independently verifying when and where they were found. But another indication that Hamas was using the facility in part for military activity. It's important, though, to distinguish between the patients and doctors at the hospital and the Hamas fighters who were taking advantage of the fact that they can fight a war from civilian territory, something that we've seen this organization do in the past. Tell me about that video that the IDF did release showing the hostages apparently they are in Shifa Hospital. What else could we see in that video? Yeah, so the Israelis released a video last night from the CCTV surveillance cameras in the hospital on the morning of October 7th. And the Israelis say this video shows two foreign workers, one Nepalese man and one Thai man, who were injured during the cross-border attack by Hamas, dragged back into Gaza, and then they were taken to the Shifa hospital. But this was seen by the Israelis as further evidence that Hamas was using the facility not just to treat patients, but also to bring hostages. And it raises new questions about why international organizations that operate out of the hospital didn't raise a flag to say, look, there are hostages in the hospital, because that potentially could have saved lives. It would have allowed the Israelis to launch some sort of limited uh, commando raid, for example, into the hospital to try to save those if they knew they were there. And so there will be more questions about Shifa Hospital. Again, the Israelis remain there at this hour. They say they'll be there in the coming days to search for more Hamas infrastructure. And they do expect to find more of it, not just in the northern part of the Gaza Strip, where the Shifa Hospital is located, but also throughout the entirety of Gaza. One of the other developments there over the weekend, the Houthis there in Yemen saying that they hijacked essentially a cargo ship that I guess could have been linked to Israel. Do we know any more about that or is there still a lot left to figure out? Yeah, so there was a cargo ship and it was headed from Turkey to India. It was in the Red Sea and it was reportedly hijacked by Yemen's Houthi rebels that are backed by Iran. And it's a significant step up on the regional escalation ladder, because when we step back and look at what's taking place here, you've got the ground war that's happening here in southern Israel and inside Gaza. You have continued attacks by Iranian-backed rebels and, and militias across the region. And then you have the situation with 
Hezbollah, the Lebanese militant group that's also backed by Iran. The fact that the Houthis are getting involved directly in this conflict, even though they targeted a ship that was not owned by the Israelis, but that was sailing through waters in the Red Sea, it's just another indication that Iran and its proxies are willing to get more directly involved in this fight and, quite frankly, take more risks that could drag in not just Israeli responses, but also the potential of American responses. You have U.S. warships throughout the region. They're not here to fight Hamas. They're here to send a message of deterrence to Iran and its proxies across the region. And it's just yet another front in this conflict that the Israelis have to watch as things develop here on the ground. My last question for you before I let you go. Over there in southern Israel, you were talking about some of the missiles, the rockets that are there. As you're standing there, what sort of experience are you having, I would say, every few hours or so? Because I imagine you are hearing that and you're hearing explosions there in the distance. Yeah, it changes each and every day and depends where we're standing earlier Today, just a few minutes ago, there were interceptions that could be seen from this location as those rockets were fired towards central Israel. When we're a little closer to the border, we can watch those Israeli airstrikes taking place. And look, amid all of this, we try to remember the story here. And the story is the people, not just here in southern Israel, but also the innocent Palestinian people in Gaza who are caught amid this war. Hamas is fighting a battle from civilian infrastructure, as we've seen in the video and evidence released. We've seen it also with our own eyes inside Gaza as Hamas is fighting Israeli forces. And it's an incredibly challenging battlefield and a battlefield that will likely remain active, not just for the coming days or weeks, but for the coming months. Josh? All right, Trey Yings there with Fox News reporting live from southern Israel. Trey, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Please, please stay safe out there. Thank you. All right, everybody, and if you are not following Trey on Twitter or X as it's called, make sure you do that. Also on Instagram as well, as he is posting a lot of videos there with the latest developments. Taking a live look right now over the Gaza-Israel border at this hour as the fighting does continue. We're going to follow those latest developments here on Live Now from Fox as they do develop. 1121 on the East Coast and 821 on the West Coast. Several different live events now getting underway, so we'll head to those on the other side of this two-minute break.